What's up guys, Brad here, AKA Home Theater Gamer. And in today's video, let's take a look at the BenQ EW2780 Entertainment Monitor. So full disclosure before we get started, BenQ did send this product to me for review. However, they did not pay me to say anything in this video. My opinions are my own and I'm gonna be highlighting both the good and bad of this monitor. With that out of the way, let's talk about tech specs because you know, who doesn't like tech specs? <laughs> I mean, I... The EW2780 is a 27 inch 1080p IPS monitor with HDRI technology. It has a 75 hertz refresh rate with FreeSync support with a range of 48 to 75 hertz. It has a max brightness of 250 nits and five milliseconds of average response time. It also features three HDMI inputs with auto switching, has built-in audio with Travolo sound, a headphone out jack, and it also supports HDR. Current price as of this review is around $200 USD. Link are in the description below if you'd like to check it out. The monitor comes with a manual, obviously, an HDMI cable that is capable of an HDR signal, and the AC power brick. The power brick is kind of annoying, but the monitor is thinner as a result of the power supply not being inside of it. The included stand was easy to assemble and attach to the monitor, and it's pretty sturdy while not taking up too much space. Unfortunately, the monitor only offers basic tilt adjustment with no swivel or height adjustment, which is kind of a bummer. The menu buttons are on the bottom right of the bezel and actually have a really nice feel to them. The menu system itself is fairly basic, but it gets the job done. You have all your standard adjustments, such as brightness, contrast, and color controls, along with various eye care modes. Brightness Intelligence Plus uses a sensor to detect ambient light and adjust brightness and color temperature accordingly. The e-paper mode is useful for reading books or browsing Reddit. A color weakness mode is also implemented for people who have color vision deficiencies. And there's also a low blue light mode for those who like to use their computers before bed. There are also two selectable HDR modes which can be accessed on the bottom right of the front bezel. The bezel itself is very thin and works great in a multi-monitor setup. So how does this thing look? Out of the box picture quality is actually pretty great. I made a few minor tweaks such as brightness and RGB color controls, but everything else was pretty much left at default. Color seems accurate and contrast ratio is pretty good at 1000 to 1, though it's not as good as a VA panel. Games do look pretty awesome on this display, I have to admit. I noticed little to no ghosting playing Doom Eternal at 75 hertz and the game was extremely fluid. The monitor does support FreeSync with a range of 48 to 75 hertz, though it's not G-Sync compatible as that requires a DisplayPort connection and this monitor doesn't have that. There is an AMA, Advanced Motion Accelerator, which helps to improve greater grade response time. Playing around with this setting, Premium produced extremely visible inverse ghosting, but High didn't, so I left it on High. I wanna talk about HDR support for a minute because I'm sure some of you are wondering about that. I mean, for a $200 monitor, how good can HDR be? Well, my initial impressions using HDR in Windows 10 weren't great. I was actually completely unimpressed with how the HDR looked on the EW2780. That was until I hooked up a PS4 Pro. It was at that point that I felt like Stanley Ipkiss. <laughs> The EW2780 felt like it came alive. Games looked fantastic in HDR, and watching shows like Our Planet on Netflix really makes you feel like this monitor should be two or three times the price that it is. Hooking up the PS4 Pro, it actually reminded me of just how crappy the Windows 10 implementation of HDR is. I even verified that it wasn't the monitor by hooking my PC up to my TV, the Vizio P65C1, and I had a similar experience. Now, for reference, I could only get HDR to work on the PS4 Pro. The Xbox One X only supports HDR at 4K, so that's a no-go. However, the One X does work flawlessly with FreeSync, though if a game is locked at 30 FPS, you're really not gonna get much of a benefit. The EW2780 does feature BenQ's HDRI technology. This technology uses three core components to improve the HDR experience. BenQ lists these components as intelligence control, which uses a sensor to detect ambient light and dynamically adjust brightness and color temperature, stunning clarity, which improves contrast and clarity, and vivid color, which increases color accuracy and intensity. While I'm not usually a fan of these type of technologies, BenQ's HDRI implementation actually works well and I think is very useful on budget monitors such as the EW2780. Toggling through the two included HDR picture settings, which can also be activated on an SDR source to emulate HDR, however, it makes the picture quality look worse. I found the HDR setting to look better to my eyes than the Cinema HDR setting. Cinema HDR tends to clip highlight detail in scenes with a lot of peak highlights, which is definitely something you don't want. I recommend sticking with the HDR setting if displaying HDR content. Lastly, let's talk about sound.
The speakers on the EW2780 are okay. They use Travolo sound, but if I'm being completely honest, I don't really think it makes a difference. The three audio profiles do help out with the three mixes they're labeled for, though sometimes they accentuate certain elements too much. <laughs> The speakers work in a pinch, and if it's all you have, they're certainly better than nothing. In all honesty, they do sound better than other monitor speakers I've heard in this price range, but upgrading to headphones or dedicated speakers will improve your experience tenfold. So the real question is, is this monitor worth buying? If you're looking for a great all-around monitor for web browsing, YouTube, and Netflix watching, and some gaming here and there, I think it's a perfect pickup. It has an IPS panel, decent HDR support with HDRI, multiple HDMI inputs, FreeSync support, and decent enough sound to get you by until you can budget for headphones or speakers. BenQ does offer other monitors in the EW line, so if you prefer a 24 inch variant of this monitor or if you need 1440p or 4K resolution, you should check them out. And that does it for this review. I hope you enjoyed it. I went through a lot of stuff and I'm sure I left something out. If you have a question about this monitor or just life in general, feel free to leave a comment down below. And while you're at it, hit that like button and don't forget to hit subscribe and click the bell notification so you know exactly the moment when I upload a new video, which, you know, is basically like stalking. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one when I play basketball dressed up as a werewolf. Ah!